so we are done with the first chapter we have seen the basic concepts of stress strain and uh, various uh, linear changes volumetric changes and uh, many number of numericals today we will be starting the second chapter so the shear force diagram and moment diagram um, actually we are starting the concept of bending so the first chapter regarding bending is shear force diagram and moment diagram after this we will be going with uh, uh, stresses in beams and then we will be going with uh, slope and deflection so we will be completing these three chapters that's the concept of bending completely and uh, why we are going with this thing is because in these three chapters you will be requiring little amount of practice so if you are completing little bit uh, early so if you are going ahead and completing chapters remaining previous gate questions etc wherever you have doubt you can ask me in the classroom or you can put it in the doubt solving option okay doubt solving application so we are going with the shear force diagram, bending moment diagram. So this chapter is completely based upon the concept of equilibrium. I hope uh, everybody have clearly understood what is the concept of equilibrium. And we are going to take uh, 2D4 systems only. So we will be applying three equations. Sigma Fx is equal to 0, Sigma Fy 0, Sigma Mz 0. Using those, you will be getting the answers. Understood? Okay. So we are going with the shear force diagram, bending moment diagram. So in this, first of all, we will see the types of supports and types of beams and all. Then we will go into the main part of the chapter, that is the second one, shear force diagram, bending moment diagram drawing. And then we will be going to the last and very small concept, that is beams with internal hinges. Okay. And uh, in this, uh, as you all know, that to draw shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, shortcuts are also very, very important. So I have observed that uh, many faculties give many number of, n number of shortcuts, which out of which very uh, few are very much uh, required or useful. So I will be explaining in a better way. Uh, I will be cutting down all the shortcuts which are not all required. I will be explaining both in the traditional way and also the shortcuts way. I mean, I will be making you people to know how to solve a question using a traditional method and also shortcut method. Because what happens is sometimes questions, uh, some if you see previous gate questions, few questions are in such a way that uh, where shortcut is not at all valid. You have to do it in a completely traditional way. You should write down each and every step. So you should be knowing the complete method. Along with that, uh, there are questions where you have to apply a shortcut. So wherever the shortcut is valid, if you are not using the shortcut and wasting your time, then that's not the correct way of solving the question. So I'll be making you be able to know where you should use the shortcut and what shortcut you should be using and where should not be, uh, you should be going with a traditional method because no shortcut, no shortcut will be valid there. Yeah. So this chapter <coughs> is going to be a very turning point because uh, whatever you're going to study after this, is, is at least uh, the coming two chapters and also uh, slope and, uh, and also strain energy and resilience, that is the ninth chapter, is going to be dependent on this chapter itself, the second chapter itself. So it's a very important one. And uh, if you have any doubt, feel free to ask me. Okay. So though it is silly or simple, kindly ask me and get it clear. Okay. So we are going ahead with the concept of bending. So first chapter is shear force diagram, bending moon diagram. So let's go into the definition of a beam. So beam in a general sense, the definition is nothing but the member which undergoes bending. So beam is the member which is nothing but the member which undergoes bending. So in a general sense here, I'm not giving you the technical definition X. So first of all, I'm giving you the general definition that is beam is the member that undergoes bending. Okay, kindly write down the definition. Please do write down. Put the siding as beam and write down. The member which undergoes bending is called as beam. Once it's over, please let me know. Okay. Very good. Understand? Now, if you see a member as shown on the secondary screen, this member will undergo bending if a load is applied in this direction. That is perpendicular to the length here. Okay. So, if you apply a load perpendicular to the length, so bending will happen. It's very obvious from the diagram itself. Okay. So, we call the direction along which the load is applied as transverse direction and uh, the perpendicular direction as, I mean, the direction along which the length is there, especially as longitudinal direction. So basically, in uh, at a basic sense, a basic uh, uh, vocabulary, a uh, basic vocabulary level, uh, the definition for longitudinal means the axis or the direction along the longest dimension. For example, you see the board. So board is having breadth or height like this, okay, and thickness is into the wall and it is having uh, length like this. So the longest dimension or longest axis is along this direction. So we call that as, uh, so we call that as the longitudinal direction. Understand? If you take a notebook, whichever you are using to write down, you can understand which axis or which direction is the longitudinal direction. 
So please keep in mind, longitudinal direction means the axis along which the longest dimension is there. Okay, and uh, what is the direction you take perpendicular to that direction is called as transverse direction. Okay, you can write down your own words if you want to copy your notebook. So longitudinal direction means the direction along which the longest dimension is there. Longitudinal direction means the direction along which the longest dimension of the component is there. Done? Okay, and you can write down any axis or any direction perpendicular to the longitudinal direction is called as transverse direction. So I hope uh, from now you should not be having any, uh, you will not be having any confusion regarding what is a longitudinal direction and what is a transverse direction. Yeah. Okay. So from the diagram we can see that if the load is acting along a transverse direction, we can say the component will undergo bending. So it's very easy to define bending or how bending will happen, why bending will happen with respect to uh, or because of the application of uh, load. Okay. Now let's look into the moments here. How moments will cause bending? or when moments will cause bending. If you have a component like this, so this is x axis, this is y axis and this is z axis, this is m suffix x, this is m suffix y and this is m suffix z. Okay, this is m suffix x, this is m suffix y and this is m suffix z. Okay, now m suffix x means you've taken a member like this and you have applied a moment like this. So here the rotation, the moment is about the longitudinal axis. The moment is about the longitudinal axis, understand? And uh, here, if you take MY, the moment is about the transverse axis. So here, this can cause bending, understand? Or you can take in this way as well. So I'm causing bending to happen. So if the moment, that means if my thumb, if the moment is in such a way, the thumb is pointing in transverse direction, then that will cause bending. So here we see that if the moment is acting about transverse axis, it can cause bending. So if you see here, MZ is also a transverse axis moment and MY is also transverse axis moment and here MX means or here MX is actually a long uh, moment about longitudinal axis. Here any doubt regarding these three things? Everyone clear about uh, these things? MX is moment about longitudinal axis, MY is moment about transverse axis and mz is also moment about transverse axis okay so here mx will cause torsion my and mz will cause my and M, M, y and mz will cause So we understood two things now, that is, if the load is acting along transverse axis, bending will happen. If the moment is acting about transverse axis, then also bending will happen, understand? So bending is a phenomenon that will, that will happen when loads or moments are acting along transverse axis or about transverse axis respectively, okay? Now we can give the definition of beam as the member which experiences loads in transverse axis or moments about transverse axis, that is the correct definition or technical or standard, standard definition for the concept of beam, clear? You can copy this definition of beam here. The general definition is for our understanding purpose and the technical definition is to build up the concept further. You can copy the diagram on the board as well, it can give you a clarity. I would like to show you some pictures of beams to clear one very big misunderstanding that beam should always be uh, horizontal, column should always be vertical. There is no strict uh, statement like that, understand? So your beam can be both horizontal and vertical, okay? And your column can also be both horizontal and vertical, okay? So the definition of beam or column is completely given based upon the way the loads are acting or moments are acting, that's all. We'll come to the column later. Right now we are concerned about uh, bending only or beam only. So the beam means it should experience uh, load or moment about transverse axis or along transverse axis, that's all, clear? Yeah? So if you see these pictures, you can understand that aeroplane wing is an example of a beam because it experiences loads due to wind, due to engine's weight, etc. in transverse direction. So it will undergo bending, so it's nothing but a beam. And also if you take a cell phone tower, telecom tower, so that will be experiencing uh, bending due to winds and all, okay? But here if you see, the aeroplane wing is a horizontal beam, but uh, cell phone tower or any 
big uh, pole is actually a vertical beam. Clear? So please write down a note point. So beam can be both horizontal and vertical. Beam can be both horizontal and vertical. Write down. And then you can write down examples also. So is it done everyone? Beam can be both horizontal and vertical. Example of horizontal beam is airplane wing. Example of vertical beam is cell phone tower. Okay, good. Let's uh, go ahead. Now to support a beam, we will be using different types of supports. And in fact, in beams, the type of support is very, very important. The way the beam is bending is dependent on primarily the types of supports we are using. Usage of the same load on different types of uh, beams which are having different supports will cause different way of bending. That means if you have two similar dimensions beams, length, breadth, height, everything is same, but the types of supports you are used is different with respect to this thing and this thing. So though you apply same load in both the cases, it will cause different way of bending. Understand? And the way you solve for anything, stresses, slopes, deflections, etc. Everything will be different. Okay? That's why you should know the types of supports which are used to support bending. So there are three major types of supports which we use. They are roller support, hinge or pin support and then fixed support. Okay? Understand? So what is the significance or what is the application or what is the way in which the roller support will be allowing the beam to bend. Let's look into that one. If you take a roller support, so roller support means some roller will be there. So if this is the beam, so roller support means it will have this type of setup. So the beam is not, if that means in this diagram case, you can understand that the beam, I'm putting the beam in shaded way. So the beam is actually the beam is actually kept in horizontal position here and you and this roller support is used here. So here in this scenario, the beam is not allowed to move vertically. Okay. So in this case, the beam is not allowed to move vertically. If you are taking such type of, uh, if you are taking this type of beam, So here the beam is not allowed to move horizontally. Okay, so it cannot move horizontally this side or this side. Clear? Yeah? Understood? Same way here also this cannot move vertically downside or upside. It will not be allowing that. But it is free to move in one particular direction. So here in this case it is free to move due to the application of load in horizontal direction. In this case the beam is free to move along vertical direction. Understand? And other thing is here the beam is free to rotate about this point like this. So here also the beam is free to rotate about this point. Clear? Yeah? So whenever you take a roller support, so you will be having one reaction force. So mostly you will be dealing with these type of beams. So always whenever you see a roller support, you will be putting R, Y. So here we will be having reaction force like this. So I am not putting R, Y here to not to confuse you or R, X not to confuse you here. So please remember that you will be having reaction force in one direction and we are putting the reaction force or restrictive force because it is free to move in horizontal direction so we don't need to that means there is no restriction at all here yeah? so we will not be putting any restrictive force in this direction or rx in this direction or for ry in this direction or ry for this particular diagram and here the member is uh, free to rotate about the point so we will not be putting any restrictive or reactive moment that means he said the statement that vertical deflection is prevented so that is the case for this example if you take this example, horizontal deflection is avoided. In the same way, if you are going with the second one, that is uh, hinged support. So in this case, what happens is the member, the beam is restricted not to move in both the directions, X and Y. So here, if you take the free body diagram, you will be having both RX and also RY. But here also, the member is free to rotate about this point. So there will be no reaction moment. Okay. Now if you go to the last one, fixed support. So fixed support is very, very prominent. So maybe the room in which you are sitting, the beam will be having fixed support only. So if you take the fixed support, the beam will have reaction force Rx, the beam will have reaction force Ry, and also it will have reaction moment M0. 
But here what happening is the beam is not allowed to freely rotate about this point. The beam is not allowed to freely rotate about this point here. Understood? Clear? So whenever you see such type of uh, beam, I mean such type of support or respect to support, you should be putting the respect to free body diagram. Clear? If you are uh, putting or if you are missing uh, one of the force Rx in this hinged one or reaction moment here or anything, if you are missing any one force that should be there, you will be getting wrong answer. Understand? Clear? So you should be very careful enough in identifying the all the reaction force or moments whenever you see the respect to support. Clear? Can you copy this? So based upon the combination of supports we are using, we can have friction support, we can use uh, a combination of uh, hinged plus roller, etc. We have different types of beams and uh, few beams are given some standard names. So you can see on the screen, many names are already familiar to you people. So I want you people to copy those beams or copy the diagrams and uh, after that I will explain you uh, regarding each and every beam. Kindly copy that. Meanwhile, I will draw the free board diagram of each and every beam so that you can copy after this. Okay. <coughs> so, <coughs> anyways, you guys go on copying. You can draw these free board diagrams on your own as well, but uh, still, I am drawing it here. I would like to explain one important thing, that's why I have drawn it completely. You can copy this as well and uh, let me know once it's over. Okay, <clears throat> listen carefully everyone. We have six uh, types of beams here. So they are, they are having different, different uh, reaction forces, unknown reaction forces, unknown reaction moments. If you see the first row, it's having uh, three unknowns. 3 unknowns, 2 unknowns, it's having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 unknowns, it's having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 unknowns and here you're having 3 plus 1, 4 unknowns here. Okay, now if you see the equilibrium equations, number of equilibrium equations we have uh, for equilibrium condition for any beam, we have 3 equations, sigma fx is equal to 0, sigma fy is 0, sigma mz is 0. So we have 3 equations, understand? So 3 equations you have means maximum we can evaluate 3 unknowns. Okay. So if you have if you have less than or equal to three unknowns, we can solve the loading condition and get the answers, right? So if you see the first row here, in all these three cases, there are less than or equal to three unknowns. So all these three are statically determinate numericals. Understand? So these three are statically determinate numericals, and uh, below three are And these three are statically indeterminate. Statically indeterminate numericals. Understand? Okay. In this subject of song, or uh, at least in this particular chapter, we are going to deal with only statically indeterminate type of uh, beams only. Because we have to apply equilibrium condition, we have to get the answer and go ahead with uh, finding our shear force diagram, minimum diagram, clear? And uh, we will be going through this statically indeterminate type of numerical in 8th uh, or 7th chapter, okay? But uh, civil people will be going through these remaining statically indeterminate type of uh, beams in the separate of structure analysis, okay? So they will be studying about uh, many terms like or many concepts like statical indeterminacy, kinematic indeterminacy, many things and you will be going ahead. Understand? Clear? So as far as song subject is concerned, we will be closing at the level where we will be discussing, uh, we will be closing at the level where statical indeterminate numericals are there. Okay everyone? Understood? So in one of a non-gate examination, a, uh, a question was asked where a continuous beam is a statically determinate beam, statically indeterminate beam or none of these or uh, uh, etc. something like that equation came. So you can understand that a continuous beam is actually a, a continuous beam is actually a statically indeterminate type of beam. So you guys know that uh, to solve these uh, statically indeterminate type of numericals, we will be requiring uh, compatibility conditions as well. So we will use various compatibility conditions to evaluate all the unknown reaction forces and moments. 
Clear? So this uh, to deal with this question, we have the compatibility condition which can be applied by the knowledge which we gain in this chapter. That is slope and deflection concept. So using slope and deflection concept, we can uh, up, de generate the compatibility condition and get the answer. That's why we'll be taking this example. That's it. So remaining and all, civil people will be going through them in the separate of structural analysis, and uh, mechanical people will not be dealing with those statically determined type of numericals. Okay. Let's uh, go ahead. So we have different types of loads. So here I'm showing you the major three types of loads we're gonna deal with uh, uh, in this chapter. So first one is a point load. So point load means the load is acting at the single point along the length of the beam. So uniformly distributed load beams, that means the first one you can see on the picture. So the beams, I mean the load is uniformly distributed along that length. So here you can see that the intensity of the load is same. Okay. So if the intensity is going on varying around the length, we call it as varying distributed load or varyingly distributed uh, load on the beam. So here you can see the last one on the beam, you can see that uh, the intensity is going on varying along the length. So we can have uh, other types of loads where intensity is uh, going on varying in other fashion as well. So here we see in the first diagram, the intensity is varying as a constant, intensity is not at all changing. Okay, so in the second diagram or the last diagram, you can see the intensity is going on increasing in a linear way. Okay, so you can have in any scenario. It's very clear from the diagram itself, right? Cantilever beam means we'll be having a one fixed support. Simply support beam means one fixed support, one hinged support, one roller support. Overhanging beam means we'll be having two roller supports. We can have one hinge and one roller as well, but we cannot have two hinges. Okay, if you take a continuous beam, we'll be having one hinge and remaining all our rollers will be we will be having more than one roller, that's very obvious in the diagram, okay? And if you take uh, a fixed beam, we will be having fixed supports, okay? And if you take a cantilever simply support beam, the cantilever beam will be putting roller support, that's it. Clear Sanjay? Okay? Understood? So, we are coming with this uh, types of loads. So, uniformly distributed load means intensity will be constant. Uniformly varying or varying distributed load means intensity will be going on increasing in a, uh, intensity will be going on increasing in a, a uh, linear way and we can have uh, a beam like this or uh, we can have a load on a beam like this where intensity uh, instead of varying in a linear uh, in a constant way we can have a scenario where intensity is varying in this way as well so according to some curve so here based upon this line i can say the intensity is constant intensity is not varying but with respect to the way in which the line is going on Varying, we can say intensity is going on varying along the length. Understand? Clear? Okay. <coughs> Let me see. Uh, other people, you can copy the names of these three loads here or types of loads we are going to deal with in this chapter. How we are giving the name? Okay. And uh, whenever a name is given in a question, immediately what type of diagram we should take? It's our actually, uh, it's our actual way of, uh, uh, it's our object of uh, learning this concept here. So if you have simply support beam, simply support beam means we directly mean default way that one hinge, one roller, that's it. If you take one hinge and uh, if you take both the hinges, it's wrong. If you take both the rollers, it's also wrong again. Understand? So in that way, we are actually learning it here. So coming to continuous beam, if you say, if you are changing rollers. So one strict thing is in a continuous beam, we will be having one hinge remaining all our rollers. And we should have more than one roller because it should be different with respect to simply support beam. And if we are comparing these two, the one big, very big difference which is coming in resistance is it is a statically determined beam and statically determined type of beam. So to make it statically determined, we should have or to make it different with respect to this thing, we should have more than one roller. Okay. So if you have a scenario like this, only uh, two rollers are there, one hinge is there. Again, it's also statically determined only. We can take it as continuous as well. Okay. Okay, understand. So if you want to go beyond anything beyond this, you will be learning in structural analysis because it's anyways, continuous beam is coming under statically indeterminate type of beams here. Okay, anyways, we'll go ahead into our concept. So wherever uh, you think, uh, if anything is missing as far as SOM is concerned, you can let me know. Yeah. So if you are, re if you are removing some supports and uh, putting other supports, we will be eventually changing the type of the beam. So automatically our deflections, everything will change. So again, we are coming back to the condition of uh, equilibrium or static equilibrium. Anyways, we are dealing with beams which are at rest. They are not experiencing any velocity. So we are going to deal with uh, the, or uh, we are going to apply this condition of static equilibrium. So again, we are coming back to those equations. 
just to revise sigma fx0, sigma fy0, sigma mz is equal to 0. If you apply those three equations, you will be getting the unknown reaction forces and moments. Okay. And one important thing to keep in mind, I don't know these unknown reaction forces and moments. I mean, I don't know their magnitude and I don't know their direction as well. So here if you see Rx, Ry, M0, I just took R to direction. I know some values are there for them. Sometimes mathematical calculation or after solving those three equations, you might get some values to be zero as well. Okay, mostly in many of the questions you'll be getting Rx as zero because uh, we'll be applying loads in transverse direction. Very, very rarely in very, very a few examples we'll be observing questions having uh, forces in length direction. So in most of the cases we'll be getting Rx is equal to zero. So what I would like to convey here is you might get Rx or any force is equal to zero. And we, that means we don't know the magnitudes of forces. We don't know the magnitude of, uh, we don't know the directions as well. So what I'm doing is let the calculations give the value I mean the magnitude and also the direction. So arbitrarily, I'm just taking the directions here. So Rx, Rv, I just took in one particular direction. So the equation sigma fx, sigma fy, sigma mz is equal to zero. They give us the value of those forces and moments along with magnitude with direction. Understand? So these also, A y, B y, obviously like if you are applying a force in downward direction, obviously A y, B y will be upside direction only. So sometimes your uh, uh, approach or sometimes your thinking about the direction of the force will be correct, sometimes it will be wrong, but still that's okay because your mathematical calculations or application of equilibrium equations will give you the values, I mean the magnitudes along with signs there. So you take any direction, you can get the answer correctly. If you are getting negative sign, that means whatever the direction you chosen is wrong. You should take opposite direction there. So I took this M0 to be anti-clockwise in a default way. Okay. So after doing calculation, I'm getting, let's assume the answer M0 value is equal to minus 10 Newton meter. That means I have taken opposite direction to the actual or correct direction. So I'll be taking in clockwise sense, opposite of the taken initial direction. Understood? That's all. Let's uh, see one uh, example to understand about how to apply the condition of equilibrium here. So because in every question, the first step and first and foremost step, in fact, the first and foremost step is application of equilibrium condition. So you should be able to get all the unknown reaction force and moments. Then only we can go ahead with drawing shear force diagram and bending one diagram. Okay. Kindly copy the question and get the answer. So the correct answer is A here. So very simple question. So those people who haven't got the answer, you can look at here. So I'm taking the free body diagram. So free body diagram means you will be taking out the beam and you will be identifying all the forces, upright forces and also unknown forces. And you can apply the condition of equilibrium to get the value of values of unknown reaction forces and also moments. So here at P, there is no, I mean, there is a hinge. So we'll be having reaction force Px. We'll be having reaction force Py and here we'll be having only Qy because it's a roller support. And at the center, there is a moment, I'm taking it as M0, that is 1 kilo Newton meter. So total length is equal to given as 1 meter and this is given as 0.5 and this is given as 0.5 meter. So if you apply equilibrium conditions, so first equation is sigma fx is equal to 0. This gives you Px value is equal to 0. Now if you take sigma Fy is equal to 0, this gives you Py plus Qy value is equal to 0. Sigma Mz is equal to 0. So I can take moment about any point because the whole body is in equilibrium. The whole body is not rotating at all. So it is not rotating, rotating about any point. So I can take rotation about any point equal to 0. So I'll take about this point because uh, more unknowns are there, Px and Py. So if I take about this point, so QY is there, QY is giving us rotation, that is QY into 1 anti-clockwise. So QY into 1 anti-clockwise and moment is there already, which is giving us to clockwise rotation. So minus 1 kilo Newton meter is equal to 0. So here meter, meter will be cancelled. So QY will come out to be 1 kilo Newton. This gives you, substituting this in this equation, will get you PY is equal to minus 1 kilo Newton. So we got the value of PY to be negative. That means the arbitrary direction we took is wrong. So the correct way of representation of reaction forces on this beam is like this. So P y is acting downside. So there is one kilo Newton and Q is acting upside only because it came out to be positive itself. So one kilo Newton and we have clockwise moment that is M naught as one kilo Newton meter. Understood? So this is the first step. I hope uh, everybody have got the answer. Very simple question. You guys can go ahead with uh, another question just for your uh, practice. Okay, just a warm up regarding equilibrium condition before going into the actual part of the chapter. Okay, so can you copy this text? Diagram is there in the next slide. 
options are there in the subsequent slide. We will go into that one. <coughs> so here there, uh, it's a, uh, the picture is actually a screenshot. That's why that uh, page number uh, watermark is coming. So please remember that the point A, that is the bottom support of the beam of the member is actually at the center. So that side 1.5, so this side also 1.5. I'll give the options on the next slide. So kindly once let me know you're done uh, when you're done copying this diagram. Yeah, you have to get reaction forces at the, at the both the supports. I'll show the next slide, please wait. Sapshan Kumar, we have to get reaction forces at the both the supports A and B. So these are the options, you can find out the best appropriate answer. You can think smartly and get the answer fast as well because uh, you don't have to do all these three steps. Okay, so it's simple because uh, you can get the answer by uh, finding, by, that means by looking at the options. So here if you see the free word diagram of the member, the member is like this. It is 1.5 meter, it is also 1.5 meter. So this is A, we have AX, we have AY and here we have BX. So BX means according to the question it is R, B, H. So this is uh, R, A, V and this is nothing but R, A, H. So if you see the loading condition, so load applied is P. So if you apply the equation, it comes out to be only one force is there, sorry two forces are there. So R, A, H minus R, B, H is equal to zero. That means R, A, H value, R, B, H value both are same. If you see the options here, only one option is having Yeah, only one option. So only one option is showing that RAH, RBA should be same. RAH and RBA should be same. That is nothing but option number D. Like that you can give the answer as D itself. Okay. So if you write down the other equations, I am just writing down the equations, not solving them. So sigma FI0 means P is acting downside, RAV is acting upside. So RAV minus P is equal to 0. This gives you RAV is equal to P itself. Now if you take uh, MZ is equal to 0. So I am taking a moment about this point because more number of unknowns are passing through this point. So P into 1.5 anti-clockwise and Bx into the whole height that is nothing but uh, given the equation as 6 plus 2 8. So plus Rbh into 8 is equal to 0. This gives you Rbh is equal to minus 1.5 into P by 8. So it is coming out to be negative means whatever the direction we took is wrong. So you should be taking in opposite sense here and uh, substituting from this substituting here we can get that R A H is also equal to 1.5 into P. Okay, R A H value is equal to R B H. So R A H is also should be taken in opposite sense. Clear? Like this, the answer for this question is D. So let's uh, enter into the main part of this chapter: drawing shear force diagram, Venn moon diagram. Here, yeah. so we'll go step by step. So please remember that uh, initially it will look like that you understand you. There is nothing extra to learn there, okay. But slowly as you go ahead, you will be finding out the varieties of questions, varieties of numericals where uh, you have to think twice. That means whatever you know will not be sufficient enough to uh, make you go ahead. So please uh, be patient enough and listen carefully. So whatever I say, uh, you should be doing it. I mean whatever, if I am asking you to solve a question or example, I want you people to solve it. Unless and until you are solving along with me you will not be actually learning in the classroom. Understand? And this is the chapter which you can't learn on your own. So you should be learning from me. Clear? So let's go ahead step by step. Kindly listen properly. So first of all, we should understand what exactly is the definition of shear force diagram and bending moon diagram. Then we'll go ahead into the main part of this uh, chapter. Okay? Put the siding as shear force diagram and bending moon diagram. 